Hi, I'm Mark Scarpa. I'm a media entrepreneur and the founder of Defiance.tv, where we're innovating and transforming the landscape of news and entertainment with innovative AI technology. Hi, I'm Tim Draper, a venture capitalist and Bitcoin advocate known for funding over 15 unicorns, including Tesla and Skype. You're tuned into the Edge of AI, where we're exploring the cutting edge of technology, media, and finance. An advocate for innovation in every sense. Let's not just break the mold, let's reshape it. Hello, AI podcast passengers. Jump on in. Here's what's to come on today's journey. Find out how a VC maverick and a media legend are reshaping our digital future by utilizing AI twins for their TV appearances. And hear from the man behind dozens of unicorns and his wild ride of funding them. And finally, how one of our guests started educating his digital twin only to end up being educated daily by that digital twin. All this and more, take your seat. Welcome aboard the Edge of AI podcast. Snap into your safety belt and prepare to explore the depths of the rapidly expanding AI universe. Each episode is a dispatch featuring hyper-relevant reports from the pilots, pioneers, and passengers aboard the AI rocket ship. We explore the latest use cases and developments in AI, hear from experts building tech, and learn how this disruptive force is transforming industries and society. Welcome aboard. I'm Ron Levy, and I'm your captain Captain for today's voyage. Just like most of you, I've embraced the spirit of exploration throughout my life, from starting my own business before graduating high school to traversing the world's most challenging terrains. I've always sought out new frontiers. I built one of the largest award-winning custom home companies, and most recently, I've nav- navigated uh, complex regulations while founding and leading a public company that is dedicated to applying technology and training. Today's episode features Tim Draper. He's a legendary venture capitalist and Bitcoin advocate who has funded over 15 unicorns at the seed stage, including Tesla, Skype, and Robinhood, a trailblazer in viral marketing and cryptocurrency investments. He's consistently ranked among the most influential figures in finance and tech. Draper's passion for entrepreneurship led him to create Draper University of Heroes, training over 1,200 entrepreneurs from 84 different companies. I I apologize, from 84 different countries, that is. We are also pleased to have Mark Scarpa, visionary media entrepreneur, based, uh, he's he's behind thousands of original TV and digital programs, founder and CEO of Defiance TV, pioneering AI-integrated content creation. A global powerhouse in venture capital, Draper VC has been at the forefront of identifying and nurturing groundbreaking startups with a portfolio that reads like the who's who of tech innovation, revolutionizing the media landscape. Defiance Media is bringing cutting-edge news and entertainment to 150 million households worldwide, blending AI technology with unscripted content for a truly next-gen viewing experience. Tim and Mark, it's a pleasure to have you both here. Great. Thanks to be. Thanks for having me on, on your show here. Uh, well, fantastic. Let's look. Let's uh, dive into the fascinating intersection of technology, media, and finance that you're you're navigating. Tim, you had a front row seat to numerous unicorn success stories. If you could step into the shoes of any founder you back for a day, whose journey intrigues you the most, and why would that be? I'd have to say Elon's journey has uh, intrigues me the most. He, um, he really has a very good heart and is um, doing everything he can to uh, move humanity forward and uh, and move us off this planet if we need to be off the planet. He, he's he's doing extraordinary things, um, and if we're you know, on the planet, uh, it's going to be a cleaner planet because of the Tesla. I think uh, he. Um, and and he's trying to encourage free speech with uh, Twitter X, and I think that that's really important. Um, we need free speech, 
particularly because the media um, generally is taking sides one way or another. And if they do, then then it's all um, opinion editorial rather than uh, factual. And so if that's going to be the case with media, uh, I think it's going to be important for all of us to read all sides of an issue before making a decision and or, or, or coming up with our own point of view. So I, I think uh, Elon's in a very important catbird seat. He's also pushing the edge on a lot of other things. Uh, and I think that that would be the one uh, where I would say he is in a very strong influential position and can do extraordinary things. I mean, for the raw startups, the question is, which raw startup are you interested in? Um, it would be hard for me to choose. There, uh, there are companies um, taking Bitcoin to the next level. There are companies uh, doing um, uh, putting AI on robots. Uh, there are companies that are exploring space in a lot of different directions. Uh, I think there are some really interesting things happening in healthcare, in medicine, uh, where data is driving a lot of new decision making and new therapeutics. Uh, I think we're all going to be uh, way better off in the next 10 or 20 years. Um, in fact, I'm running my venture business very much on AI now. It's uh, it's sort of shocking how quickly we've been able to adapt to all of these new tools uh, that are allowing, allowing me to do uh, better diligence on companies, on industries, on people, all through AI. Very exciting. Uh, lots of cool things happening out there. Uh, and it was kind of an interesting question got me going. So, man, so much to unpack. We're going to stick to the AI theme a little bit, but I guess I'm just going to say it out loud. When you were listing off the different things that Elon's gotten involved in, those industries are world changing. I mean, you've got solar company, you've got uh, um, communications, with, you've got electric cars. And I was going to say he didn't do media, but actually X is media, right? So he's now touched in the media space. Who knows what plans he's got for that? Uh, going wide, and I know Mark, that kind of goes into your world a little bit. So, so I think that that's that's really fascinating. But what what the other part on AI that came up for me, Tim, when you were talking is when you talk about entrepreneurship and AI, you were just saying you're even running a lot of your investments um, with some help of AI, whatever direction I don't know, but with some help of AI. Would you say it's, it's if we were talking to smaller time entrepreneurs, people with the drive and the passion and the ideas? maybe not the resources. Um, would you suggest that it's easier for them now to get a leg up because the AI, quite honestly, that's very available, a lot of it for either free or not very much money. Maybe you could speak to that a little bit on what you're seeing. Yeah, there are, um, there are a lot of new uh, products that are coming out in AI, but even just the general AI that where you get with uh with perplexity or, or open AI or uh, any number of different applications, you, you get extraordinary information in all different fields. Yes. And that, that information in some ways it has leveled the playing field a little bit, the way the internet leveled the playing field. Uh, but in some ways it's gone even farther because what is AI? It is an, an amalgamation of all of the knowledge on the earth <laughs> and and it's all um and it's uh easy to grab it from wherever uh randomly access it and uh you know everything for you want to you want to find out what the the population density is in Kenya or you want to find out whether, um, you know, how many companies are doing uh, or are growing kidneys or what, you know, all these things. And, and you just lay out the problem and the AI actually does all the computation to make that happen. Uh, it is 
and it's getting better and better and better. And so we're very excited about all the things you can do with AI. And that means that the platform we all start from is pretty much the same. Yeah. The, uh, I just, it doesn't matter what field you're starting it in. You have a real leg up over somebody who might have started a business a year ago because you can access all sorts of information that, that was not available a year ago. Really powerful point. I interviewed a humanoid last, last anyway, days ago. Um, first time, first not only first time I've ever done anything like that, it's the first time that she has has been interviewed on Zoom like that. And it was a real conversation. It was not yes or no answers. Well thought out very clearly say she's programmed with empathy and um, and sympathy, but she doesn't have any herself, like making those distinctions. So it's all here. It's here now. And uh, I think that's why we kind of all find it that fascinating. So let, let's talk about digital twins a little bit, Mark. Um, Defiance Media, you're pioneering the use of digital twins in news. Can you give us a little backstory on kind of what inspired you and, you know, in, in what way is it changing news delivery? Well, I think uh, AI in general is uh, going to create a, a massive evolution in uh, uh, not only opinion news, as, as Tim uh, pointed out, but true editorial news. Uh, we're using about five different types of AI. We're the first AI-powered television network in the world. We've been using these tools for about three years now in a variety of different categories, from the digital twin uh, aspect to writing scripts to fact-checking to actually putting our editorial content on chain um, and having it decentralized through IPFS and immutable uh, and using AI in a way to verify our source media as well from where it's actually coming from. So, you know, when you see a, uh, a uh, an editorial piece that we're doing, uh, there's been a series of steps that we've gone through in order to deliver that piece of editorial to you. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis either Defiance Media, which goes out via 160 million television households uh, over the air, fast CTV and uh, digital radio, and or through social media, or when we syndicate it out to other third-party news outlets through platforms like Getty Editorial and Video Elephant, and so on. Um, you know, the the digital twin uh, opportunity came along a few years ago. We were you know, we're a startup news and entertainment network, and really it was out of um, pure necessity. Uh, having been a, having started my career at MTV News and then working at CBS News and being one of the founding producers of CNET back in the early 90s and just seeing how traditional media um, continues to operate even to this day. You know, you have an on-camera talent, you have a studio you have all of this infrastructure that costs millions of dollars and tens of millions of dollars to um, not only install and build, but to maintain and operate. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, uh, we didn't have those resources when we were starting Defiance. So we actually were looking at um, humanoids, if you will, as a, as, a, as a way to have an on-camera persona that would be able to deliver news packages about the new economy which is primarily Web3 and FinTech um, areas of interest and truly promote adoption of this new financial uh, revolution and have that sort of, you know, aesthetic of financial empowerment and financial wellness and, and education uh, through our news reports. We uh, looked at the, the humanoid option and that was quickly decided not to be a good option. Then I was having um, lunch with um, a friend, Sam Engelbart, and uh, at Galaxy, and he said, oh, you know, we have a company in, in Israel called Hour One that is doing this interesting work with digital avatars and digital twins. And uh, we got in touch with them. They were using it for customer service use cases, uh, which is a perfectly acceptable and normal use case. And I said, well, I want to use it for news. And from that, they uh, customized some things for us. And now they have a whole group that allows them to uh, work with other news agencies. So their digital twin technology coupled with a variety of other secret sauce uh, workflows that we're doing with um, the rest of the AI tools allows us to have uh, these digital twins that can report on news entertainment about a variety of different things. And in the case of Tim, you know, you have one of the most prolific individuals in, um, 
in the industry and in many industries and his career is just uh just uh, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's a uh, it's amazing um i i don't think there's one podcast or one book that can encompass it uh, that's for sure but um you know in working with draper tv and and tim um, his use case was really look i have several hundred companies that i've invested in and they're all amazing uh because he only invests in great companies and um i want to be able to talk about them all in an editorial content it's not necessarily opinion news this is you know we're, we're working with the draper tv team to do editorial on these companies as they have something to announce and something to talk about and uh, it's Tim's doppelganger that ultimately is delivering that news, which I think, you know, is a is a profound shift of just, you know, the the other process was those companies would have to go through their publicists, then try to get on a TV network or try to get on a podcast or maybe do pay to play media. And here they have their, you know, their primary investor not only talking about them in events and at cocktail parties and so on, but uh, on a worldwide platform um, like Draper TV and, and then we get to syndicate that content out through uh, Defiance. I think it's an, it's an incredible tool um, that uh, we've been very appreciative to have the opportunity to deliver those stories. It has been really wonderful. And um, my digital twin gets uh, more intelligent and better looking every day. And the re- <laughs> reason is I'm getting older, but he's staying the same age. And he is delivering yeah, he news is in, in words. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to describe some of these companies in these, in these perfect, you know, perfect sentences. It makes me look very good. But it's um, amazing. If you go to, real case, real if world. You go to Draper TV. Um, first, we have all the show, Meet the Drapers, who, you know, now we have 100 million viewers at Meet the Drapers. But um, but if you go and see this, this digital twin in these, um, these episodes, and each one is like a minute. And so you can, ju- you can just w- look and you can capture it. And, uh, and you get a, a view on the world that you would not have had before because these entrepreneurs are doing something that, uh, that hasn't been done before. And uh, so it's actually been, uh, been great. And, and I get big surprises like, uh, you know, some people are just addicted to it. Some people look and watch it every day. Are, are there any other uses you, you know, personally, Tim, or are, are utilizing digital twins for? Yeah, I have, um, we have a company that's called uh, Portal that does a, um, a uh, hologram of me. And they did the hologram of Michael Jackson. And I, uh, I'm familiar with Portal. They've got some really early and amazing tech. Yeah. And, uh, and now there's one in the New York City uh, in the airport. We have one at Draper University. Uh, there's one at UT San Antonio. And uh, and you can go up to it and ask it one of 200 questions. And now they are incorporating in um, AI that, see, because they asked me 200 questions. I sat there. Whereas Mark was very kind, I I was only there for maybe three hours. Um, These guys, it was about an eight-hour thing with about 200 questions. And those were the only questions I was able to answer. Now we have um, uh, AI that is taking all the answers I've ever answered on any questions anywhere. And that, um, so if you walk up to my... uh, my hologram uh you can ask me anything and it's really kind of fun it's really good for the world to start being able to interact because at this point it it feels like most of the world thinks that this is just academia right it's just it's an academic exercise but the second you actually interact with the things that we're talking about here that you've brought up it's well past that it's actually functioning and useful and i think that's what you just eloquently described there I think there's another point here to to make is um, the Drapo decentralized show that uh, Tim is doing the news reports on every day or his doppelganger is 
Um, it's a global show. The the show also can be the same package that we create once in English and be translated in up to 22 different languages using Tim's native voice. So you'll actually have the same package in Japan and speaking Japanese, but it's Tim speaking Japanese. And I don't believe Tim knows how to speak fluent Japanese. I mean, this is really extraordinary what Mark is working on. And and I read one you know, chapter of my book and, and now he's saying, well, that's all I need. And now I can do the whole book not only in English, but in, you know, 15 languages. And I just went, whoa. Geez. So in essence, these are <laughs> AI agents, right? You educate them based on parameters, right? And they can go out into the internet and using those parameters, gain that knowledge base, right? How close are we? And I, I possibly know some of the answer to this, but, but you guys are way in it. As far as individual people having their individual AI agents, that the, they've put the parameters around and are gaining knowledge all the time. Are we close to that? We're here now. I mean, uh, the the language modules that we are using with Draper TV are proprietary to Tim. Um, the language modules are based upon, uh, you know, ethical AI data that's going into a Tim AI module that's specific to him. The input is Tim's input. It's, uh, you know, not only data from the companies that he uh, has invested in that we're doing news stories on, but as he just mentioned, it's his podcast, for example, it's his books, his, it is the voice of Tim Draper from a, from a heart and soul perspective. It's not actually going out to the internet to look at open source data. This is Tim's module. It's Tim AI. And that's really important to keep in mind, you know, um, there's, the, you know, there's this idea that open source AI is, is, is useful. And yes, it is. It's terrific. It's one of the best, most profound tools that have ever been created. Um, but, you know, closed data sets are very important from, uh, for a lot of reasons. A, to make sure you get the authenticity of the person you're representing correctly. But there's the ethical elements of it. You know, we are a news organization, so there's the journalistic integrity that we need to maintain. And then, of course, uh, there's just the rights management of it. Yes, you know, there's there's legal that's involved here, too. So um, my recommendation to anyone looking to pursue this is to make sure that they, you know, have good input and uh, have the input all rights cleared and have it be the voice of yourself and your 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 own, you know, your own world, if you will, the mini me, if you will, of yourself so that the output is uh is uh, something that could be used uh, globally on all media, on all platforms, without any, um, you know, concern from a uh, from a legal perspective. Right, Tim, you've talked about competitive governance in the past. If you could implement one unconventional policy to govern a hypothetical tech utopia, what what would it be? Well, you you'll have to read my next book. Um, <laughs> you can give us uh, a teaser. You know, we've got something called Draper Nation coming out, which is uh, so you can go become a citizen of Draper Nation now. And uh, and it has, a, you know, it goes with the pledge that I wrote for Draper University. It goes with um, really it's all about freedom and trust and uh, and uh, having rule of law so very clear so that people understand what they need they need to do and then they can innovate from there uh, I would say if if there were one there are about five that come to mind so maybe I'll go through a few please please one is um, first of all you know mark can probably um, create a perfect bureaucrat uh, that follows all the rules and uh, sends those messages out to everybody. And it is pretty clear to me that governments don't have to be so bloated. Uh, they don't need nearly as many people to do the things that they are doing today. Now, the bureaucrats currently in the world are overworked. They've got way too much to do. They have, because every time a politician comes up with a new idea for a new law, 
the bureaucrats have to implement it and the businesses have to suffer under it. And, uh, and so I think using AI in, um, in creating the bureaucracy, the government entities, it will either help the bureaucrats a lot or it will replace the need for a lot of them. So I think that's going to be kind of interesting. The bureaucrats that are, that remain, I think, should be paid based on performance. Um, I think they should be paid uh, based on GDP growth rather than CPI. I think that would be very helpful um, wow. because then they, then they'd be aligned with business and they 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 know where their uh, money comes from. Uh, and I think that they should uh, be w- rewarded when they operate more efficiently. And I think that would be really interesting. Um, in medicine, I think uh, the government should, rather than slapping down, uh, trying to put in price controls, I think that they should operate more under the uh, the way the, uh, uh, what are they called, the, um, like a Kaiser, uh, they should operate more with Kaisers where, um, everybody's out looking out for the good, the overall good of the patient and not, um, just trying to create another surgery that's going to cost more money. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, HMOs and, uh, Kaiser are really good models and I think that that could change government a lot. I think um, I think having everyone benefit from the success of business is not clear to a lot of people. Uh, they they feel that um, Jeff Bezos is taking something from them, but as we all know, it's he's making our life so much better. Uh, I think something that would uh, give the proper honor to those people who have done extraordinary things for our society uh, and recognize that at the same time, making sure that all of society rises with it um, would be good. And I think you could, uh, there are probably some structural things you could do there. Um, and then I, I think uh, in, incentives should be really aligned uh, when it comes to things like immigration, where uh, if people are going to come across the border, they should know that they have to work. Uh, they uh, they can't just come across the border for all the benefits. And uh, and so there uh, there could be that as a deterrent um, rather than a wall or a, that kind of thing. And then I love free trade. I think that's a wonderful thing. And I would uh, encourage all countries to trade with each other because wars only happen from the top. Uh, they don't happen from the business community. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I think I would go after a lot of different things. Uh, and so you asked a simple question, and I, I'm afraid I would I would keep going if I could. So. Yeah. But that was, that was it was enlightening. I, the first example that came to me when you talked about the government, um, actually, there's two comments I'm going to make. But the first example that came to me is, you know, take our tax code. If you had an AI product that the whole every word of the tax code got inputted in it, input in it, and it was all there, and no one else could touch it, so it's only what is in those books. You could literally query it. You know, if I do this with my taxes, is is there anything in your in your database that says it's a problem? Like in a, in a second, you can do the research that we're not capable of doing now in a year. Yeah, you could, I mean, and you could simplify that, of course. But um, if, if and I believe that the world will eventually operate um, in Bitcoin and maybe some other cryptocurrencies too. Um, and if they operate completely in Bitcoin, all of the records are on the blockchain. So there would be no need to do all the accounting work and all the legal work and all the auditing work and the transfer agents and the bookkeepers because it would already be done on the blockchain. And so operating a business completely in Bitcoin would um, it w- would allow the government to back off because they would be collecting their taxes automatically. 
Uh, there are so many things that are happening in technology that are going to make it so much easier for all of us to operate, whether um, from the private sector or from the public sector. I, I, I see it as interesting timing because I, I think the three of us, no doubt, are, are, are you know, really believe in decentralization and the power of it and the transparency of it. Um, and there's so much changing in the existing traditional things that exist of all kinds. At the same time, this is coming to life and transitioning into what you just described doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen a piece at a time. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. My tie, you know, it's a Bitcoin tie, but if you look really close, it said it says hashtag dego decentralized government. Ah, uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so decentralization is really powerful. Um, centralization is good for a while, and then um, and then it becomes a monopolistic practice, and it needs to be decentralized. And government is the biggest monopoly there is, and it needs to be decentralized. Yeah, with, with without a doubt. Let's 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 talk a little bit about Draper TV and and, and um, uh, Defiance. So you guys got together um, to to blend both of what you know individually had and make things worth work and spin it up. A couple of questions along the, those lines, and if either of you want to comment on it. Number one is kind of you know how did that get started, and what was the beginning like, and the other thing is. What was the unexpected synergy that came from doing that and came out of it? Mark, why don't you take it? I've been talking a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, you're certainly a lot more interesting than I am, so I don't mind. <laughs> um, I, I think that, um, you know, it, it came about uh, really through, I think, Tim's, Tim was, um, and I don't want to speak for Tim, but Tim and, and his producer, Sarika Batra at uh, Traper TV, had seen some of the work that we were doing in AI and digital twins and defiance daily. And um, they really just said, Hey, we'd like to do this too. And um, it wasn't something of course we had thought of, which was to go out and, and collaborate with, um, with other known individuals on uh, of Tim's stature. So really the, the origination of the idea of the collaboration came from Draper TV and, and Tim and Sarika. Uh, and we were very uh, pleased to have the opportunity to put that together for them. We did a, a nice shoot, as Tim said, uh, a capture up in San Francisco. It was about three hours of his time. And now we're able to deliver these daily news and editorial packages that represent his body of work, which is the body of work of all the investments that he and his uh, amazing team have done over the years and continue to do. There's a lot of companies um, in the Draper Associates portfolio that are just incredible and very innovating. And um, we're able to laser focus on those several hundred um, you know, companies and really get their voice out there in a clean editorial context, as I mentioned before, with Tim as the spokesperson for them, if you will. But we, we don't see him as a spokesperson. He's not shilling because the pieces are editorial in nature. Um, he just happens to be the talent, if you will, for those particular pieces. And you know, our audience has seen, um, you know, has really enjoyed them. When I show them to other people, they're very impressed. The the thing that I get mostly, and I don't know if Tim gets this too, is they, they say, is that Tim Draper? Because he's a worldwide recognized individual. And I say, yeah, that's that's Tim. That's what I'm trying to show you. I, I just told you, I'm showing you Tim's AI. And they're like, but no, that's him. He's doing those every day, right? And I say, no, no, this is his doppelganger. We did a one-time three-hour shoot with Tim uh, we can make uh, a feature film here. We can do all kinds of things with with his digital twin character. And I think the most important thing um, out of all of this that we've been appreciative of is the trust that he and his team has uh, given us and our partners in our workflow. Uh, because, you know, it, it is a trust that, you know, he believes that the technology solutions we have selected will represent, um, A, won't get hacked, which is obviously a big concern. Uh, because you know we're we're in a position where we're delivering these news packages on a daily bay daily basis, and we want to make sure the voice is consistent and uh, and safe overall. So, uh, at the end of the day, that's the big uh, that's the big surprise is when people are like, no, no, he's really doing those every day. He's got a 
is doing news reports for you? I said, no, again, it's, it's Tim's doppelganger uh, because the quality is so good and the way that we captured it just, uh, it came out really well. So I don't know, Tim, if you have some additional thoughts there, if you're getting the same reactions from people or, or what the reactions are. Well, um, first we, we've always wanted to be able to, um, somehow, uh, broadcast all of those extraordinary things these entrepreneurs are doing in a way uh, that makes it um, come alive for people. Uh, they could search through all the websites or whatever, and it would be it would take a long time and be hard to really understand. And these allow them uh, that. So we kind of had that in mind. Um, Draper TV, we're expanding in a lot of different directions. Um, we have multiple shows, Meet the Drapers, other things, but I think it's the most advanced thing that we're doing. And uh, the surprises to me are how good it makes me look because I would, if I had to read all those things, I would stutter, I would, I would it would be flawed. And it's easier to listen to than listening to a, a human broadcast. It's smoother and easier, and the the words come out very clearly. And uh, very few uh, situations where they get the tech uh, the technical terms wrong. Uh, it's and I think they've somehow been able to nail that. Um, the biggest surprise for me is. I watch every one because I learn about my own companies. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that statement. That's a big deal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's what one yeah, minute. Is a big and boom. And all of a sudden I know where they are in their business, how things are going. I get a really good view. As to where's, it, where's it, where's it drawing that information from to keep it that current? From their press releases. From their press releases. releases. Whatever's been... Mark, do you have any any other thoughts on where that's coming? I, you guys are choosing them with Serica. Um, and I guess is yes. doing about choosing. Wow. Just, yeah, we, uh, we've come up with a... Uh, we've come up with a workflow with the Draper TV team to, again, keep the editorial integrity of the, of the content intact. Uh, you know, these are announcements that are coming from uh, the companies directly. Uh, and, you know, then we're, we're adding additional journalistic guidelines to them so that they do have that, uh, that integrity to them. They're not, they're just, they're, they're not um, infomercial pieces. They're, they're real editorial. And that's a very important distinction. And, you know, to, and another thing to Tim's point, you know, he's, he's traveling all around the world and, is obviously advocating for his companies in the industry at, at large. He's a very busy man. So uh, these are, I think, a great way for not only folks of Tim, for Tim personally, but folks of his stature to be able to uh, deliver, uh, you know, information and news about a variety of things to the world. And well, I know that that's one of the powerful things you you have on all those is, it's uh, your numbers are good as far as how many listeners you have. That's great. On top of that, it's the quality of those listeners that you, you it's just not, it's not normal. It's, it's abnormal in a wonderful way. And I think that that makes it really powerful and, and probably starts a bit of a flywheel. Right. So I, I, I think it's, you know, super great. So um, I think we're getting close to the end of our time. So can, can each of you um, say where the best place to, to follow you each and your projects are individually and in, uh, our listeners listeners be able to do exactly that. Well, I guess it's Draper TV now. Um, I would I'd usually say Tim Draper on Twitter, but um, I think I think you go to Draper TV, you're going to see an awful lot of me. All right, wonderful. <laughs> and Mark, I, I would say the same. I, I would say that you know a great place to see the the Draper decentralized content is on Draper TV. Draper TV is not just, uh, you know, the Meet the Draper show and the Deep Draper Decentralized AI program that we're, we're collaborating on. He has a variety of different programming there that really encompasses the uh, industry as a whole. And 
where things are going as well as where they are now. There's there's a lot of great programming there. And um, I go there I, myself and just, you know, poke around and look at some of the shows. And uh, I learn a lot from it. Um, and I think uh, with the AI tools that the Draper TV team is starting to embrace now, you're going to see a lot more interesting programming coming from the mind of Tim Draper. That part, well, <laughs> Defiance.media, is that, that, is that the best thing to know? And, and of course, uh, our project is Defiance Media, Defiance.tv uh, for uh, news and entertainment for the new economy as a whole. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. I can't thank you both enough. It's been thank you. truly fantastic. I wish we had three more hours, but we don't. Um, so it's time for another safe landing out the outer edges of the AI universe for today. This is your Captain Ron. And on behalf of our guests and the entire crew, I'd like to thank you for choosing to voyage with us today. We wish you a safe and enjoyable continuation of your journey. When you come back aboard, make sure to bring a friend, our starship. It's always ready for more adventures. And if you're listening, go to Spotify and iTunes right now, rate us and say something awesome. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, join over 135,000 other followers by hitting the subscribe button and passing this episode on to a friend or two. You can also now catch us on myco.io, and that's myco.io where you can watch and earn for your time and attention. Don't forget to visit edgeofai.xyz, where you can learn more about partnering and subscribe to the Outer Edge newsletter for the latest Edge of Company news, events, and show drops. In addition, connect with us on all the major uh, platforms by searching for Edge of underscore AI and join the exciting conversations happening online. Before we sign off, mark your calendars for our next voyage, where we'll be continuing to unravel AI's mysteries and advancements. Until then, bye-bye. The views and opinions expressed on Edge of AI reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. While we make every effort to ensure that the information about AI technology is accurate and up-to-date, we cannot guarantee its accuracy, completeness, or timeliness. We make no representations or warranties of any kind with respect to the information, products, or services discussed. Please be aware AI may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information and produce offensive or biased content. Under no circumstances shall we be liable for any loss or damage, including without limitation, indirect or consequential loss or damage, or any loss or damage arising from loss of data or profits arising out of or in connection with the use of technology discussed on our podcast. Additionally, our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. Lastly, time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of these links. Refer to our website, edgeofai.xyz, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, privacy policy, and copyright notice.